My name is Hassan Wassel, and I am happy to represent a large group of people who contributed to this work. Data centers has played a great role in the cloud and analytics, infra, analytics uh, infrastructure of the world over the past 20 years. It's largely constructed as a set of clusters of 10 to 50K machines that are connected through multi-stage clone networks using commodity Ethernet switches. But there are some trends that are calling us to challenge this architecture. First, resource disaggregation requires ultra low latency to match the devices that have latencies of 10 microseconds or less. Can Ethernet support that such latency at 1,000 machine scale? Moreover, more uh, workloads are getting into the data centers, such as high performance computing and machine learning. These workloads require tight predictable latency to keep the expensive accelerators running at all time. Currently, we build separate networks specialized for them in order to provide this low latency. But that's expensive and add manageability overhead. So what do we do? So we present in this paper the vision of cliques, which is a building block as a scheduling domain for the data center. It's comprised of set of compute and accelerators and uh, compute nodes that are fungibly can be attached to the network, can be at located. It provides very high bandwidth within that clique and very low latency compared to the rest of the uh, data center network. It's connected to the rest of the data center network using the data center interconnect. But the question, how can we build such a network that's cost effective and unified for the low latency traffic as well as legacy traffic? coexisting within the same data center without having it as a specialized network. In this work, I'm introducing to you to Aquila, which is our first attempt and exploration towards this goal of building a unified data center fabric for ultra low latency as well as legacy IP traffic. We use a new L2 protocol that's cell based integrated into a switch and NIC ASIC that we call TIN or TOR or NIC. Aquila provides ultra low latency fabric RTT of 40 microseconds at load and sub 10 microseconds for RMAs. This translates to 300% latency reduction for co-designed applications. I'm happy now to discuss our design goals and how we achieve them briefly First, we wanted to have a cost-effective topology. So we selected the Dragonfly topology from the high-performance computing community, which is a direct connect topology. Second, we wanted ultra-low latency. So we opted for a cell-based L2 protocol that we came up with that's shallow buffered for low latency. Third, we wanted a unified fabric. So we added multiple protocol engines that are natively designed with GNET to the NIC. Lastly, we wanted to coexist within the fabric, so this network connects with the rest of the fabric using Ethernet. Now I'm going to go through these goals in, and how we achieve them in a little bit more details. The Dragonfly topology is a direct connect for topology from the HPC community. By direct connect, I mean it's directly connected to the switch. So imagine that this square is the tin connected to these circles that are the hosts. When we organize them together in a fully connected mesh, that forms the first dimension of the Dragonfly topology. We call this the pod. If we organize these pods in another layer of fully connected mesh, that's the second dimension of the Dragonfly, which forms the two-dimensional Dragonfly topology. This Dragonfly topology helps us minimize cost over clone networks by minimizing uh, long optical links. In Aquila, we have 48 pods, each have 12 tins, roughly uh, 1,000 machines. It provides a bisection bandwidth of more than 100 terabits per second for uh, uniform random traffic, and for worst case traffic patterns, more than 50 terabits per second. Connecting uh, two tins to the, uh, uh, the tin uh, saves cost, as well as reduces the blast radius on failures. For low latency, we 
came up with the GNET cell based protocol, and the details of that is too much for this talk, so I'm going to touch on three uh, design tenants of the protocol. First, it's cell based. The shallow buffer cell based allows us to have very low latency, 15 nanoseconds uh, switching latency. This also enables uh, sharing the bandwidth between IP and low latency traffic without uh, having head of line blocking. Moreover, it, we have virtual channels for more QoS isolation. Second, it's near lossless on the, the cell level. By using credit-based flow control on the link level, we are, are almost lossless at the cell level. However, we allow packets to get dropped at the peripheral of the GNET network while using, uh, while using deep buffers. Lastly, we need to use adaptive routing on, in hardware to be able to use non-minimal path in the Dragonfly network to be able to achieve uh, high bandwidth at worst case traffic patterns, as well as routing uh, around transient congestion. With this GNET Dragonfly, how can we connect it to the rest of the Jupyter, our data center? We added Ethernet links, another Ethernet links that connects to uh, the rest of the data center to each 10. This way, a machine on the Aquila click can talk to the rest of the data center using Ethernet. So I showed you three of the goals. How can, did we build this unified fabric? Let's zoom in on the 10. We start with an IP NIC that's connected to the host using a PCIe link, as well as another link that I just mentioned. Then we add a GNET switch connect, that connects to the rest of the Dragonfly. And then we added internal, 18 internal links that are connected to the protocol engines. One is IP protocol engine that solidifies the packets uh, into cells that are sent over GNET. And another is the one RMA NIC that provides the RMA primitives that needs more bandwidth. So we added another PCIe link and connected that to a PCIe switch. This way, GNET can work as a unified fabric for IP traffic that's tunneled through GNET, as well as native one RMA traffic. And we envision GNET can be used for tunneling other kinds of traffic like CXL or PCIe. Let's see how IP works on GNET. So IP works on GNET by employing the design principle of end-to-end -end admission control, like what we saw yesterday with EDQDS. We send RTS and CTS for every packet in order to make them before they go into the GNET fabric. CTSs are only sent when there is enough bandwidth and buffers at the receiver. And RTS arrivals determines the order of packets released to the host. Admission controls gives us this uh, is required because of this ordering and it gives us uh, in cast protection for, because we are buffering the packets at the ingress. Let's see the life of a packet within the Aquila clique. When the packet arrives uh, at the source 10, it immediately sends an RTS to the destination. Once it has enough bandwidth and buffers, it issues a CTS and then it immediately sends these data cells that are route, adaptively routed through the Aquila clique. And that's why they can arrive out of order. So we need to do packet assembly and reordering and then release it to the host. This was IP, but we wanted low latency. So the second protocol engine is the 1RMA. 1RMA provides read, write, and atomics primitives to the Aquila clique. It's co-designed with GNET. So the 1RMA uh, read requests and responses are first class GNET cells. It's not layered on top of GNET. Read requests acts like CTS with, so that when the receiver receives it, uh, a read request, it acts like an admission control signal. It also tolerates out of order delivery. So the responses land in memory directly without needing to any re reordering. It's also co-designed with PCIe. So PCIe responses are sent directly on GNET. Moreover, we, have, we can spread them from IP traffic using virtual channels. This way I showed you how we designed Aquila using these design goals and uh, uh, how, to, how did you achieve them. Let's see the evaluation. First, we evaluate Aquila using 
uh, our uh, 500 machines in an Aquila clique. We used two kinds of traffic. We used uh, background IP traffic using uh, a synthetic traffic generator using Pony Express, as well as Creek Map, which is a production key value store that we have that uses RMA. Creek Map uses both one RMA as well as uh, Pony Express. One RMA and Pony Express uses Swift as or Swift-like algorithms like as congestion control. The metrics that we are using for measuring latency is fabric RTT as measured by hardware timestamps and uh, one RMA total execution latency as exported by the hardware. It's worth noting that one RMA total execution latency is an overestimation of the fabric buffering because it includes the PCIe res uh, uh, response processing. So we see here, the first thing we wanted to try is run IP separately from RM one RMA. So we plot on the x-axis the uniform random offered load and the y-axis the metrics that I just mentioned. We can see that uh, for one RMA we achieve uh, less than 10 microseconds uh, tail latency at high load as well as for, uh, one, uh, for IP we achieve 40 microseconds latency. But this is when they are running separately. So we did an isolation experiment where we run the click map traffic and bulk IP traffic uh, on Pony Express. In the first set of uh, experiment, we run click map on a higher priority virtual channel than the uh, bulk IP traffic. This is the blue and red bars. And this we can see uh, almost uh, no effect uh, from uh, running the bulk IP traffic. We wanted to see the effect of the virtual channels on that, so we run another experiment where they share the virtual channel, and we do see some uh, effect on uh, the tail latency from uh, the bulk traffic. However, we wanted to see what, how does that compare to um, running the same thing on an Ethernet network. So we run the same experiment, but this time ClickMap is running on a higher priority QS class, uh, while the uh, uniform random bulk traffic is running on a lower priority. It does, QS does achieve the uh, isolation that's required, but overall the latency is higher than what's achieved in Aquila. But the, what does that mean for applications? For applications, we see that we measure the end-to-end -end lookup latency for click map, which is a key value store. So we can see here that click map on Pwn Express achieves much higher latency than on uh, one RMA, which is co-designed with Aquila. It's more than 300% reduction. With that, I would like to talk about a little bit of retrospective on this work. The direct connect topology was great for cutting cost. However, it came with some pitfalls. It's not amenable to uh, incremental deployment because uh, you need to land the dragonfly all at once. Moreover, it limits the space it can land in the data center because of the optical link, link's reach. So if we continue down this path, we probably are going to go back to Clo again because it's more amenable to uh, incremental deployment. Second, cell switching is great for low latency for sure, but we need to be cognizant of the bandwidth overhead it adds. And debugging is harder due to the lack of standard tools like Traceroute. We needed to build our own tools. Lastly, the application performance, we saw the great result just now. However, that was for co-designed applications. For legacy applications, we didn't observe as much benefit because of the OS and uh, host stack uh, effects. I'm happy to say represent, Aquila represents our first attempt to build a tightly coupled compute and storage infrastructure through uh, sub uh, providing sub-10 microseconds uh, latency. And we hope that this would inspire future research in this direction. Thank you. And I'm happy to take questions.